Hey y'all, it's Stephen Van Camp and Lewis. And um, today I want to talk a little bit more about Catlea walkeriana, uh, Catlea nobilior, and just generally hybrids that kind of look like both of them. And I'm going to show you some examples of all three. And I want to talk to you about, you know, about maybe uh, some of the identifying features uh, of each and and just generally about those particular species, um, sort of as a group. So let's turn the camera around and look at these guys in more detail. All right, so in front of me, I have three plants, as you can see, all are happy and healthy and are blooming their little plant brains out. Um, but let, let's get a little bit of an introduction. In fact, you, in earlier videos, you've seen this one. This one is called Catlea walkeriana, at least on the tag. It's uh, supposed to be Estrella dacalina by sibling. Um, and I have gotten conflicting information about Estrella da Colina, which means star on the hill uh, in Portuguese, not Spanish, as some people think. Um, and uh, this particular one has some characteristics that make me think there is Catlea latigesii in the background and that this is not a pure Walkeriana. But before we get into that, let's just take a kind of a closer look at this one and Boy, it's beautiful. Absolutely love it. The, the fragrance is, I mean, even if it wasn't a really nice flower in general, just the fragrance alone would be enough for me to grow it. Um, we're gonna go over here and look at another Alba. This is Catlea nobilior. Uh, this, as you can see, has no pigment in the flowers and is a true Alba. Um, the yellow does not count as a pigment, um, and, and a lot of a lot of Catleas, uh, the albas do have yellow, in especially in unifoliate Catleas, in bifoliate Catleas like Catlea guttata or bicolor. The yellow, well, the absence of colored pigments in the flowers will have a, a green, so um, green is considered. Alba in, in some of those species, like I said, especially the, the bifoliates. And this one is clearly not uh, an Alba. It has plenty of color, but to folks out there that might not know a whole lot about Catlea wacriana or nobilior, an unscrupulous vendor might sell this as one of those. Um, when this is actually, this is Catlea megarlin. Uh, made my by my friend, made and actually registered by my friend here in town, Jeff Frost. And this is Nobilior by Eclandii. And you can see the influence of the Eclandii on the spots here. You don't typically see spots in either Wakariana or Nobilior like this. And you know, the lip shape and color is a little different than either of those species. So there's some, some clues to its heritage in here. Um, but it's a first bloom, so as I like to say in, in my other videos, this is hopefully the ugliest bloom that this plant will put out. So I'm expecting good things from it. But um, as you can see, you know, these are all blooming at the same time. Uh, Catlea walkeriana is typically a fall bloomer, although exceptionally well-grown specimens can bloom at other times of the year. Uh, same thing with Nobilior in that it can bloom multiple times a year, but it typically blooms in spring. Uh, even my plants, which are, uh, I like to think are fairly well grown, typically only bloom in spring. I have yet to have a fall blooming Nobilior. Um, of course, this being Nobilior by Eclandii, Nobilior is a spring bloomer typically, uh, as is Eclandii. It can kind of bloom, Eclandii can bloom kind of any time of year, but uh, I've always had it bloom for me in the spring, uh, although I know other folks who, who can get it to bloom other times of the year as well. 
So, you know, I mentioned that this one has characteristics that make, and by this one I mean this uh, Walkeriana, this is Estrella da Colina, uh, has characteristics that makes me think there is uh, a lot of GZI in the background, so it's not a pure species. Um, for one thing, it's blooming, and this is the second year in a row that's bloomed in spring, which is typically when a lot of GZI blooms. Uh, you know, a fall blooming Cattleya Walkeriana is more normal, um, whereas, like I said, a lot of GZI blooms in the spring. Another thing to think about when looking at this one is the lip structure here, the side lobes, and you know, a, a real Cattleya Walkeriana. You know, you see where these side lobes become the lip here. That's typically more pinched, more pinched in. Um, the fact that this is kind of ruffled and there's not a, necessarily as, as clear a definition between the side lobes and the lip um, it is one of the more common characteristics that a lot of GZI imparts on its hybrids with Walkeriana. Another thing that um, my friend Antonio Reyes told me, he's a, a, a really great grower and I call him a hybrid hunter in Mexico City. And he spoke to us here in Texas in a couple different lectures um, in March. And he had some really cool lectures. And one of the things that he really looks for is, check out this, the, the edge of this lip here. You see those serrations? It's, it's like a, a, the lip is kind of jagged right there. That comes from the lot of GZI. Uh, a, a true Walkeriana will have a straight edge and it will be smooth. It won't have those, those serrations or, or dentations. Um, in fact, you know, you could call this a dentate lip. It looks like there's little teeth there around the edge. And so these are all things that make me think uh, this is Cattleya delosa, or at least some some mixture of, of Walkeriana and a lot of GZI. Uh, finally, one thing else is that my, my true nobilia, excuse me, my true Walkerianas are not blooming for me because my neighbor's light is on at night, and they are very sensitive to light, night light, and you know, so sensitive that even a nearby street light can cause them to not bloom. And this guy doesn't seem bothered by that. Whereas my true nobilia, or the ones that I know the heritage on, uh, won't bloom for me. So the spring bloomer, uh, it blooms in the presence of a nightlight. It's got lip aberrations that make me think that are consistent with a lot of GZI influence. So I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying that this one is a hybrid. Now that bee that's just buzzing around doesn't seem to care. He'll probably come in and check it out. It smells the, the fragrance and wants a piece of this. Um, you know, if somebody tells you, if, if you get one of these and somebody tells you that's a hybrid, don't take it personally. I've seen a lot of folks get all bent out of shape when somebody tells them that they have a hybrid Walkeriana. Um, and they're still beautiful. Keep growing them. It doesn't mean you have to take it personally or that you have to throw it away or anything. Keep growing them, they're great. The scent, like I said, the scent alone is well worth it. Now, um, you can see the similarity. If you are not super familiar with either Nobilia or Walkeriana, you could certainly be tricked into thinking one is the other by an unscrupulous vendor who, who sells this as something that it's not. So it's it takes a lot of years to really be able to eyeball these and say, well, I think that's a hybrid or I think that's a species. I'm fairly confident that this is a species and that's doubly true for nobilia or, or excuse me, albas. Albas are really difficult because they lack, lack a lot of those defining characteristics um, that you can see in colors uh, when trying to root out hybrids or figure out if you've got a species or not. This particular one is, is very vigorous. So you can see the roots down there. Um, really going crazy. I, I need to put this in a larger pot. I won't unpot it from this. I'll just simply stick it in the larger pot and um, let those roots, especially these ones here, just work their way into the pot. 
Um, I really, really dislike unpotting and repotting Wakariana and Nobiliar, especially Nobiliar. They're exceptionally sensitive to that kind of thing. But you can see this one's very happy. Got two spikes that are open, and then we've got these blooms back here that should open probably in a couple weeks. So I'll have blooms on this one for a while. And I actually just pulled a seed pod off of here, so I should get those in flask soon at some point. It's on the list, I promise. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, like I said, this is Cattleya Magerlin, uh, very waxy petals and sepals, super thick, almost like plastic, uh, much, much tougher than these other ones. And I guess that's, that's from that hybrid vigor of Nobiliore and Eclandii. But hey, if you don't know Nobiliore or, uh, or Wakariana, an unscrupulous vendor could certainly pass this off as one of those. And again, it takes some years to figure out that no, this is neither pure Nobiliar nor is it Wakariana. This is the first bloom. Check out that root tip there. It's got a new growth coming in too. Happy plants. Happy plants make me happy. So that's it. I hope you have a great day, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.